God, we come to worship you today. Lord Jesus, we lift up your name. May you be praised, for it's in your name we ask it. Amen. Amen and hallelujah. Well, good morning, beloved. It's a different kind of Sunday today, but uh, I like when John was on the island of Patmos, he was worshiping in the spirit. So I encourage you to do that today as we gather. And uh, I've asked Dr. Matt Herman, who is a uh, local physician here in Fredericksburg, also a deacon at this church and a Sunday school teacher, that we could have kind of a brief interview talking about the situation that we're in. So Dr. Herman, please join me up here and uh, thank you for uh, being here. Yeah. <laughs> so first of all, tell us what the situation is in, for us in Gillespie County concerning COVID-19 and testing and all that kind of thing. Right, we do have adequate testing. Uh, probably one of the frustrations for us physicians is it takes a while to get back, uh, three to seven days for getting results, and that's a little bit of a frustration. Um, uh, we've not had any positives currently in Gillespie County to date. Uh, I know there's been talk and in the paper about a positive at the hospital, which was a non-clinic personnel who had been here for three or four days and then was went off to a um, different area and they later tested positive. And so people that were exposed to them uh, were have been quarantined and so far all negatives that have been around them. Still waiting on some testing. Okay. And, and uh uh, the we've been watching the news about how we can keep from spreading this. How would you encourage us to uh, respond right now? I think the number one thing is just if you're sick, stay home. Uh, that's our number one thing we keep telling people. Uh, if you believe you need medical care, please call uh, your physician's clinic first, and then you'll be directed on how to proceed at that point. Uh, continued social distancing, keeping our distance, and um, 
then uh, as governor and other officials have said, you know, try and not meet in groups of greater than 10. Um, lots of hand washing or using hand gel if you have it available. Uh, but soap and water works great. And just if you cough or sneeze into your elbow, into a tissue, dispose of it, and then wash your hands. Okay, and then the uh, medical personnel, of course, is on our prayer list along with several others, but uh, you being one of those, how can we pray for our medical uh, folks here in Gillespie County, our family and, and friends that are in the medical profession? Um, number one, just lift up our local health officials uh, and then our people directing our hospital, our CEOs, COOs, and those making a lot of decisions. They're under a lot of stress right mm -hmm. now. And um, as physicians, uh, we're feeling a good bit of stress and um, a lot of questions coming our way. Um, and just kind of expectations that are upon us and some we put on ourselves and some we feel from our patients and colleagues. So, so that's been a thing is stress and then pray for our stamina and our health that we can stay healthy through this. Um, our clinic, we're much like other small businesses that are suffering in the community. I mean, uh, we're taking a financial impact and uh, unusual for us, we're turning away patients. We're having to tell people to stay home and not come in, especially well visits and things. So mm -hmm. it's a financial burden on our practice as well. Um, pray for, we're actually seeing uh, the medical board in Texas and others who govern our things to relax some things as far as telemedicine for us right mm -hmm. now. And uh, so that's kind of something can bridge our gaps. We're praying that technology holds up. Amen. Uh, as with church services. And yeah, today. So, yeah. <laughs> and tomorrow there's a new uh, announcement coming out from our hospital. Yes, just share, uh, we were notified Friday that as of tomorrow, March 23rd, uh, the hospital will be closed to all visitors. Yeah. Um, now there are exceptions. Of course. Uh, so if you're concerned, have questions, just con call the hospital and they can tell you. But uh, even um, immediate family, they're going to discourage to come in unless yeah. it's an emergency. Wow. Okay, anything else that you would encourage us from your experience? And, and of course, none of us have experience in this, but you're dealing with uh, uh, sick folks every day. What would you say to us? How could you encourage us? Yeah, I just say, you know, um, listen to what officials are saying mm -hmm. and um, just have a positive attitude about it and um, help each other. I think that's the thing I've been encouraged by some of your daily devotionals is that we help and reach out to those around us. Yeah. And, you know, we see a lot of things in Washington and over the last couple of years, just a lot of different negativity. And I say, let's, let's be as Christians, let's be positive, let's reach out in this opportunity for us to help one another. Amen. And we're seeing that and that's exciting to see. Uh, just quickly, um, we are starting to see blood shortages. Uh, mm -hmm. I know the South Texas Blood Bank is going to have a uh, blood drive. I believe it's March. No, I'm sorry, April 1st. Mm -hmm. And that's going to be at the Wellness Center. I think you can uh, look or Google South Texas Blood Bank, and they've got a thing with their schedule. Uh, or you probably could call the Wellness Center and ask them about that. But that's something yeah. I encourage people to do if they can. And what about the availability of masks and all the medical kind of uh, uh, product? And we can also add that to our prayer list for our area, or is it Please good do. supply? We're, we are concerned about that. I mean, right now we're okay. Um, I mean, I think unless, you know, if people do what they're told to do as far as meeting and grouping, we're hoping we're going to see this kind Amen. of taper. But, uh, if not, we're kind of at the front end of this uh, yeah. uh, when you look at what's happening in other countries. So we're, we are concerned about having adequate equipment. And um, I know the state is, they're releasing some emergency supplies and things right now. And so we're hoping we'll have that available. Yeah, this is not a time for that junior high attitude of not, you're not going to tell me what to do. Correct. We, uh, we <laughs> talked about that earlier. I, <laughs> Really, especially with young people being home uh, and college students and so forth, boy, we're really encouraging those young uh, folks to, to not be getting together with all their friends and 
uh, especially in large groups, but to stay away, stay home, uh, do things with your family, and uh, encourage that more. Yeah, amen. Well, we want to have thank you, Dr. Herman, so okay, much for your time. We're praying for you, and we want to do that right now. Let's, let's join together in prayer. And our Father in heaven, God, there is no one like you because no one loves us the way that you do. And we know that you are in control because, Jesus, you have been given all authority in heaven, on earth, and under the earth. And so, Lord Jesus, because of what you did for us on the cross and by the power that's in the blood, kill this coronavirus, this COVID-19, immediately and quickly. Lord, we're joining together with uh, believers all over the earth today with one prayer request. We add ours to it. Bring about a miracle that tomorrow there will suddenly be miraculously no more cases and the medical and scientific and uh, government officials will know that it wasn't anything except the mighty hand of God, an act of God. Bring it about, God, for glory to your name. Or if there's something even greater, not our will, but your will be done and accomplish your purpose. We know that you have a timing for this thing and a purpose for this thing that the whole world is experiencing. And so we simply ask God as your children accomplish that purpose quickly, quickly bring it about for the glory of Jesus Christ. And we ask Jesus that you redeem it. We pray for all those who are working overtime, whose businesses are suffering, for people without jobs right now. And we pray for medical supplies, not only here, but all over to, to be enough and food. And Lord, teach us while we are in this fast of, like John on the island of Patmos, not able to gather, not able to have that fellowship that we've been enjoying in the past. But we're grateful for the technology that we can still communicate uh, in a different kind of way. And we trust, Holy Spirit, that you will provide the warmth and affection and love in that word that's going out today. Be glorified. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and hallelujah. Jesus, your name is power. Jesus, your name is God. Jesus, your name will break every stronghold. Jesus, your name is life. Jesus, your name is life. Jesus.
know God's word in the book of Matthew, in the gospel of Matthew, it tells this story. Jesus told his disciples to get in the boat, and they got in the boat, and they took off across the sea. And as they got out there, Jesus laid down and went to sleep, and then a great storm came up. And this great storm started bringing waves into the boat. And the disciples thought, we're going to die, we're going to die. And they went and they woke Jesus and said, Jesus, do something, we're going to die. And he stood up and he said, peace, be still. And all those waves stopped. All the storm stopped. And then he asked the disciples, oh, ye of little faith, why don't you trust me? And during this crisis in our lives, we see the waves lapping on our boats. But we need to just put our faith and our trust in Jesus Christ knowing that he is in control of all things. Another place in God's word, he tells us just to be still. And just as Dr. Herman just shared, it's time for us to just be still. Be still before God. Be still before each other. And just listen to the voice of God as he speaks to our heart.
Father God, we can say it is well with our soul because you are God. You are loving, compassionate, wonderful, omnipotent God. We give you praise today. We worship you today. And we thank you that you're always good, that you love us more than we could ever imagine or think. And Lord, I pray that we could rest in that love today. Thank you, Lord God. We love you and praise you. In Jesus' name, amen.
Amen. Let's continue that prayer together. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. For thine, O Lord, is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. And Father, there is no one like you. You alone are holy and good and great and greatly to be praised. And we praise you today, Father. Thank you for loving us the way that you do. And thank you, Jesus, for what you did for us on the cross and by your authority we pray, Lord, the COVID-19 virus is spreading. Will you not execute judgment on it, O oh Lord? We do not know what to do, but our eyes are on you. And so reveal yourself mighty. And we pray for a miracle as we have been praying. We continue this prayer. Bring about a quick death to this virus that is, has uh, joined the world together and the believers together with this prayer. End it, God. You have a timing. You have a purpose. May that time be short and may that purpose bring glory and honor to Jesus Christ. Thank you, Jesus, for redeeming this by your blood. And thank you, God, for the technology that we can be able, that we are able to share with our church family by the internet. And not only us, Lord, but all the churches around Fredericksburg and Gillespie County and in the U.S. and, and even on the other side of the world watching church services today. Thank you, God, for that ability, for that uh, technology, and for those that you've given the gift to be able to work that technology and even our own. Thank you, God. Keep it working during this time of fasting from fellowship is our prayer. Fellowship from one another and distancing, but not from you. You're not far away. You are always with us, and we give you thanks. And this morning, Lord, we pray for the churches and the pastors who are preaching uh, to only a few and the message of that, uh, may we hear it loud and clear that your word is always to one person. And may that one hear you say today, come unto me, all you who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke and learn of me, for I am meek and lowly of heart, and you will find rest for your souls. May we hear the invitation today. And we pray for another congregation here in Fredericksburg, for the Hill Country Fellowship and their pastor, Pastor Chip Johnson. Bless them. May they have this technology and may it work for them as you're working it for us today. So that not only our immediate church family, but even beyond, would be able to hear a word from you today. And that's what we hunger for, Lord. Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from your mouth. And so speak, Lord. Your servants are listening. We ask all of this in the name which is above every name. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, amen and hallelujah. And good morning, Phil. Happy Sunday. <laughs> And, of course, Phil is uh, joined with nine others of us here today. We are following that rule in this room with uh, uh, ten and uh, grateful for the technology. I'm thinking about uh, Hebrews chapter 12 when it says, Therefore, since we are surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses, and so this morning we are uh, surrounded by witnesses in, in the great cloud of the Internet, I guess you would say, uh, by the by that kind of technology and let's open our Bibles this morning to second Chronicles chapter 20 I want to share a word from you from one of the great prayers of uh, the book of called Chronicles 
Now, when you study uh, the book of Chronicles, it's a, a repeat of, of uh, First and Second Kings to a degree. It actually goes back into uh, First Samuel some, the early, uh, early chapters. And, uh, and we need to understand that the book of Chronicles is kind of like a, the Gospels in terms of, of saying the same thing historically, but from a, a different perspective than the writer of First and Second Kings and First and Second Samuel. The writer of uh, the Chronicles is, is the priestly view. Uh, probably after coming back from the exile, uh, late in the terms of the Old Testament writings, these two books, First and Second Chronicles, are chronicling for us the activity of the kings from a temple perspective. From one, having lost the temple, and then having it rebuilt, not quite the same. But the responsibilities of the priest were not only for the sacrifices carried on in the temple, the priests were also uh, given the responsibility of teaching Israel, particularly with prayer. And so one of the, one of the great ways to study First and Second Chronicles, and here comes your, an assignment for you, take a look at the seven prayers in First and Second Chronicles because it's one of the teachings that the priests were giving to Israel and also to us from uh, First and Second Chronicles. Of course, yeah, so get, write this down. Uh, First Chronicles 4, very familiar prayer. A lot of books were written several years ago called the Prayer of Jabez. And you know, that, and there's a very short prayer, but it's right in the midst of all of this lineage that the, the Chronicles is going through and names we can't pronounce. And all of a sudden, here comes Jabez with his prayer. Oh, God, that you would bless me indeed. Expand my territory that I may not cause pain, that I would be blessed. And that's one of the prayers. And then in First Chronicles 16, David's prayer given to the Levites as they were to stand in the presence of the Lord, praising him, the Lord is good, his steadfast love endures forever. And then at the end of First Chronicles, the third prayer, First Chronicles 29, David's prayer or the offering to build the temple. God would not allow David to build the temple, but David did the fundraising for the temple. And when it all came in, his prayer is worth studying, the last chapter, chapter 29. And he uses that phrase in there, for thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. And of course, we recognize that phrase because uh, it shows up in Matthew 6, in the prayer that Jesus taught his uh, disciples in some of the uh, early, I mean, some of the late manuscripts, you'll notice that it was added by a scribe. And I guess we'll have to do another message on that because it was scripture that that scribe gave some understanding to that prayer because David's prayer is thanking God for what he has given to us to give to him. And when Jesus gave us that prayer, that scribe was saying, thank you, God, for giving to us this prayer to give to you. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. And then, of course, Solomon's prayer in First Chron uh, Second Chronicles chapter 6, uh, dedicating the temple. And uh, that is a prayer worth your study and the teaching there. And then, of course, where another very familiar prayer, God's answer to his prayer in Second Chronicles chapter 7. If my people, God says, who are called, a response to Solomon's prayer, who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, I will hear from heaven, will forgive their sin and heal their land. And many of us are praying that promise uh, these days. And then the seventh one is the prayer we're looking at today, finally. Second Chronicles chapter 20, King Jehoshaphat. Now, when, we, when you hear the name Jehoshaphat, probably you think of the phrase jumping Jehoshaphat, and this story is actually where that phrase came from. And we'll get to that in just a moment. But Jehoshaphat, 
uh, was not jumping when the news came to him. I want to tell this story and then read just a couple of verses from it. But chapter 20 begins with the report coming to Jehoshaphat that uh, uh, there were three great armies that had joined together to conquer Jerusalem and Judea. Now these were the days of the northern kingdom and the southern kingdom. The northern kingdom was already under attack. And uh, the southern kingdom, uh, the news came that we're under attack too, not from the north but from the south. And the news came and says these, these three great armies are encamped in En Gedi, out in the wilderness, but there were springs in En Gedi. And they are mounting an attack on Jerusalem. And the Bible says that when Jehoshaphat got this word, that he was afraid and then set his face and there's an aspect of turning there then set his face to seek the Lord in his temple and he worshiped it says he bowed down and he called the, all of the inhabitants to seek the Lord that word seek is seen several times in verse 3 and 4 and 5 and he proclaimed a fast as well and then in verse 6, he begins his prayer from 6 through verse 6 through verse 12. And you can read his prayer and study it and see how Jehoshaphat doesn't ask God to do anything in his prayer. And we can learn a great deal from that. Uh, here several weeks ago now, a couple of three weeks ago now, we looked at uh, Mary's prayer in John chapter 2 at the wedding feast. You remember the teaching there? There are times when we don't ask God, but we just simply state the case. In Mary's case, she went to the Lord, that's prayer, and said, they've run out of wine. Jesus said, what does that have to do with me? And there's a great teaching there. How will Jesus look if he gets involved in this? Is it the desire uh, uh, in that case is there a desire for wine or is there a desire for God to be glorified through his son Jesus Christ and so she didn't know what that meant and then he said my hour has not yet come and that teaches us that this is always tied our prayer is always tied to the cross to the blood of the cross to redemption and so you see a similar thing in Jehoshaphat's prayer he is simply rehearsing the mighty acts of God as if God needed to be reminded of what he has done. But when we pray, God likes to know that we know what he has done in our past. And it's one of the ways that we say thank you, and we say thank you a lot. Try this. Say thank you to God by telling him what he already knows, which is what he's done in your life. Just state it. <laughs> Amen. Just state it. God, here's what you have done in our life in this prayer. You called Abraham and gave him a promised son, Jake, Isaac, and then Jacob, and land. And you've promised that land, and we are inhabiting that land. And you drove out those inhabitants and gave us that land. That's what God uh, had done. And, and Jehoshaphat is re re rehearsing that. And then he says, in this multitude that's coming against us of, of uh, um, the Moabites, the Ammonites, and, and Edom, these are the three nations that you told us not to get any of their land because you'd already given them some land. And now they've invaded your land. It's a great prayer. They have invaded your land, God, that you promised to us. R reminding God of his promises is learning to pray and then finally in verse 12 and this is where I want to get to he makes this great statement I want you to learn this prayer because it is definitely appropriate for us because we our world has been invaded by this virus and I know that all the news want to blame this and blame that and, and uh, as one one thing I saw on social media, if there's anything that we've learned from this, don't eat bats. <laughs> and of course, Leviticus tells us that long ago. Don't eat bats. We don't know for sure where it came from, but for, no, we do know this. It's invaded. And it's invading, and no one is immune. It, and, and, 
And uh, we are certainly in the same situation. And verse 12 is our prayer. Oh, our God, will you not execute judgment on them? And you can just put on COVID-19, will you not execute judgment? Now, that's a question, but it is a veiled request. Uh, isn't it time, God, for this to come to an end? For we are powerless against this great horde that is coming against us. We can't do anything. Does that sound familiar? We do not know what to do, but our eyes are on you. And this prayer is one to learn and to pray, to state the case, Lord, COVID-19 is spreading. It's invaded your people, your world, your creation. And uh, we are powerless. We do not know what to do. Will you not execute judgment on this thing? We do not know what to do, but our eyes are on you. Now, what happened next is, uh, boy, I wish they could make a movie of this because while uh, Jehoshaphat was praying, the very next thing that happened was a word from God came through the prophet, a priest actually, Jehaziel. And Jehaziel's message came. So, so here's, here's uh, Jehoshaphat receiving this word from these men coming with the bad news. And then God has also a word. Another word came to Jehoshaphat from Jehaziel. And Jehaziel says, do not be afraid. Do not be dismayed. That means to come apart, just to, just to lose it, have a meltdown. He said, do not be afraid. Do not have a meltdown. Stand firm and hold your position and see the salvation of the Lord. Well, that's a great word. So stand still, stand firm. Well, when you trace out that word through the Old Testament, you'll see again and again God has told his people to, to make a stand. Stand where you are. Don't retreat. Don't be afraid. Don't run and hide. Stand firm. Whenever the children of Israel came out of Egypt by the mighty hand of God, he brought them out and he brought them out into the wilderness to the Dead Sea and then Pharaoh changed his mind and came after them and they were afraid and here's this word again God said stand still at the banks of the Red Sea stand still and see the salvation of God and hold your position wow. this word is used a great deal it means to present yourself to the Lord stay in your face to face relationship with God. If there's ever a word for prayer, it's that one. Hold your position. Stand still. Don't be afraid. Stay in prayer. And then here's the one. And see. And see what God is about to do. Now that was the word that came to Jehoshaphat and the whole nation. And so here's the deal. Whenever you seek the Lord and when you cry out to Him like we're doing right now, we need to listen with our eyes and see stand still hold your position and be ready to obey because the next word that came from Jehaziel was this the battle is not yours it's mine God says the battle is mine and I want you to see what I will do so he told them exactly where to go and uh, now King Jehoshaphat the next, the next verse there, I, I love this verse. It says, when Jehoshaphat heard that word, he fell on his face. And all of Judah fell on their faces, and the Levites rose up and started singing loudly. Amen. <laughs> the Levites rose, everybody fell down, and the Levites rose up, and lifted their song of praise to God. The Lord is good, and His steadfast love endures forever. We heard that kind of singing today. 
God is good, and his steadfast love endures forever. And so they were going to go out. They were being obedient. But here's what Jehoshaphat said. We don't need our army. So let's put the Levites out in front, thanking God, praising God for what he has promised because what God has said, he will do. All of them responded with faith and believed. And listen, y'all, when, when you respond with faith and believe, you praise him. And thank him in obedient, uh, in obedience with joy and and gratitude. Sometimes we talk about being o- obedient. I don't even like the sound of that word. And you know, one of the reasons that uh, oh, we're having a difficult time here in the U.S. because we're sort of we started to have a leftover defiance from the Revolutionary War. I think in our country. Like, you're not going to tell me what to do. I'm going to, I live in a, a the home of the brave, the land of the free and the home of the brave. I'm going to just go out. We don't need that kind of attitude these days. We need a humble attitude of obedience to God, knowing that we may be confined, but the Word of God is not chained. And it's going out, and it goes out with prayer. And these are the days for prayer, not defiance. And so we see the uh, faith, faithful obedience, joyful obedience, that we are praying, fasting, listening, and when the word comes from God, we are joyfully and willingly and quickly to obey with praise, with gratitude. Well, the army, the choir went out in front of the army at the king's command, and that's where we get the term jumping over. They were singing, they were celebrating, and the army was just back there saying, hey, let's just keep our swords uh, in the sheath and watch what God is going to do. And they got up there in the place where God told them, which is almost like an amphitheater looking out over this great wilderness, and here came these three armies, and they were gathered together, and God put them in confusion, and they started attacking each other. Amen. That happened several times. And that's what my prayer is, that this COVID-19 will just start eating itself and be destroyed just like God, and God can make it happen. Well, I remember uh, when our sons, Ben and Dan, were little, and I would tell them a Bible story before they went to bed. And so I was telling them this story. And uh, Ben was uh, always the spokesman for the group, for he and Dan. Dan was always just looking at him, uh, 18 months younger. And so we were sitting on the edge of the bed, and I was telling this story just like I'm telling you right now. And I, I said, so uh, God caused those three armies to get in confusion, and they started attacking each other, and they killed each other. And Ben said, Daddy, oh, what happened to the last guy? And Dan just, just nodded <laughs> in agreement. And I said, well, uh, he'd been injured so bad, I guess he bled to death. Oh, and both of them went, oh. <laughs> I thought, well, that wasn't a good answer. But it may have been their initial calling to go into medicine. I don't know. <laughs> Dr. Herman, they sure had compassion uh, in their hearts for that, uh, for that one guy. But that's exactly what happened. God won the victory that day and everyone knew it and so for us beloved it's so obvious for us today as well we have this great horde this virus this no uh, novel this new one that's coming out and uh, we are powerless and we're praying God will you not execute judgment on this thing because we can't stop it only you can we do not know what to do but our eyes are on you and so as we learn to pray that i want to spend the last moments that we have together this morning on that what what does that mean to have our eyes on god well first of all it's jesus christ jesus christ is the fulfillment the full disclosure, the full revelation of the Father. 
And so we look unto Jesus, as the writer of Hebrews says. We keep our eyes on Jesus. Now, the way that we do that is from the Word. We go into the Scripture to see Jesus Christ because it's God's testimony of Himself through His Son, Jesus Christ. Now, we all have testimonies of our experience with Christ, and that's important, but it's not near as powerful as God's testimony. God's testimony of His Son. And that's why we are in Bible study like no other time. In our homes, memorizing Scripture and meditating on it, we have that time. We're in isolation right now. And so we have our Bible and, and, and Internet that we, can, that we can listen to good music and worship with our eyes on Jesus Christ. And there are certain places in the Bible that are just, just so clear, it's obvious. And I, I want to call your attention to some of these. Get ready, here it comes. Get your notes up on your phone or a piece of paper or something. Of course, the clear picture in Isaiah 53 it actually begins in Isaiah chapter 52, verse 12. Behold, my servant shall act wisely. God is telling us to look at his suffering servant. And then the phrase in there, he was wounded for our transgressions. The chastisement of our peace was upon him, and by his wounds we are healed. All we like sheep have gone astray, every one to his own way, and the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. Spend time in that chapter. Meditate on that chapter. That's when you're looking unto Jesus. Of course, in the New Testament, it's so very clear. I gave the assignment yesterday on the, on the little uh, seven-minute clip on, on uh, John chapter 1. Look at the names of Jesus in John chapter 1. John's gospel was the last of the gospels written, the gospel of theology, who, answering the question, who is Jesus Christ? And... Uh, uh, and you'll be surprised at how many names of Jesus will identify those names. But more than that, ask yourself, what does that name mean? What does that say about Jesus? What does it say about God's promise of the coming of Jesus Christ and His work on the earth and His promise and invitation to us? Take a look at... Uh, 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 Philippians 2 verses 5 through 11 let this mind be in you which is also in Christ Jesus spend time there Philippians 2 5 through 11 Colossians 1 15 through 20 he talking about Jesus is the image of the invisible God the book of Hebrews 1 chapters 1 1 through 4 how God revealed in various ways and times uh, but now in his son, Jesus Christ, and really the whole book of Hebrews is looking at Jesus who is superior to everything else in our lives. And then, of course, the book of Revelation is called the revelation of Jesus Christ. Chapter 1, verses 9 through uh, 16, 17 the uh, describing John on the Isle of Patmos. We may go there next week because he was alone, but from isolated from fellowship with others, but not alone uh, from God. He was alone with God. And then, of course, in chapter 5, as John was wondering who is worthy to open the scroll, and he wept because no, there was no one. And the elder said, Stop weeping. Behold, the lion of the tribe of Judah, the root of David, has conquered. And he looked and saw a lamb having been slain standing. Well, you can look at that and you'll see Jesus. And then, of course, in Revelation 19 is the return of Jesus Christ on that white horse and his names and his word. Spend time in those passages looking unto Jesus. Well, let me tell you a story about one of those, and I'll call your attention to Revelation chapter 1. If you have your Bible, go there. And uh, let me give you the setting of this story. I just started pastoring. Uh, back in 1983, and uh, 
learning about going to the hospital and visiting people. And, of course, Rotan had a little hospital that, that I would visit, but the big hospital was in Abilene. And so we had some of our, uh, one of our families who had a family member that was having surgery. And uh, so uh, Daryl Monday, uh, who's pastor of First Baptist Rotan, I called him and I said, we've got a family having surgery, so, I mean, I've been to our little hospital. So he said, no, yeah, go up there and sit with the family in the waiting room and uh, I talk to them, encourage them, pray with them. I said, okay, that's, I'm, I'm uh, learning. So, uh, uh, so uh, back Daryl and, and uh, Jenna's daughter's a member of our church, Emily, her and her family. Daryl was my mentor in those early days, still is today. So I went to the waiting room there at uh, uh, the hospital there in Abilene. And uh, boy, it was full of people. Several surgeries going on. So as I was talking to the family, all of a sudden, one of the doctors came in like they do, and they walked over to one family. And you could tell this family very anxious, wondering about their, their loved one. And you could tell that doctor was not bringing good news. And suddenly they just broke down and just started weeping. Another doctor came in at the same time, walked over to another family and brought the same kind of terrible news. I remember that second family, the mother just yelled. She just cried out. And then a third one. And that waiting room became fearful chaos as people were getting this bad news. And, I, and the family I was with, they, they were... As you can imagine, and I didn't, I didn't know what to do. I just said, Lord, this is, I'd rather get on a wild horse than this. What, is, what am I supposed to do here? And the impression that I got was to go to Revelation 1. Uh, not an audible voice, but I'd been studying it, and I just thought, Revelation 1. So I just turned in my little Bible. I had my little Bible, and I just started reading. Not loud, just sitting there with the family, wanting them to hear. I said, hey, y'all, let's just listen to this. I, John, your brother and partner in tribulation and then the kingdom and patient endurance that are in Jesus was on the island called Patmos on account of the word of God and the testimony of Jesus. The more I read, the quieter it got in that waiting room. So much so noticeable that I was afraid to look up. And so I just kept reading. I was in the Spirit on the Lord's day, and I heard behind me a loud voice like a trumpet saying, What you see in a book, write and send to the seven churches. I turned to see the voice that was speaking, and I saw seven golden lampstands. And in the midst of the lampstand, one like the Son of Man, clothed with a long robe and with a golden sash around his chest, the hairs of his head were white, like white as wool, like snow. His eyes were like a flame of fire. His feet were like burnished bronze, refined in his furnace, and his voice like the sound of many waters. It was quiet in that waiting room. I was afraid to look up. I just kept reading. In his right hand he held seven stars, and from his mouth came a sharp two-edged sword. His face was like the sun shining in full strength. When I saw him, I fell at his feet as though dead. But he laid his hands on me, saying, Fear not. I am the first and the last. I am the living one. I died, and behold, I am alive forevermore. And I have the keys of death and Hades. Wow. Wow. When I finished that, I did look up, and all eyes in that waiting room were upon me. And I simply said, Jesus Christ is with you, and he is greater than whatever news you just got. And he will lead you through this time victoriously. Let's pray. And I led in that prayer. Now, that didn't change the report that those families got that day it gave them listen it gave them something greater than that report because the deception of bad news is that that's it that's the final word and beloved let me tell you something God has the final word and it is his son Jesus Christ and so let's keep our eyes on Jesus 
since we are surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside the sin and weight that so easily entangles us and let's run with endurance the race set before us, fixing our eyes on Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy set before him endured the cross, despising its shame, and has sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. Consider him. Consider him. And so, beloved, let's do that today. We don't know the time that God has allotted for this, but he has an allotted time, and we're in it. And he has a purpose for it. And so we know how to pray. Will you not execute judgment on this mighty virus, God, because we are powerless? Will you not execute judgment speedily? We have no power against it. We do not know what to do, but our eyes are on you, for you have all power and authority. Bring about glory for your name, Jesus, is our prayer. In Jesus' name, amen and hallelujah. Well, we do want to have a time of response, a time of prayer at the end of our service now. And so I want to ask you where you are in your home, in your car, with your device, if you're watching, for those of us who are in here. Let's spend a few quiet moments meditating, considering something that God has said to us through his word, through his servant today. Would you consider that word? It's from God. What God has said he will do because he is faithful. And we can always pray for the reversal, for the quick death of this virus, for the glory of Jesus Christ. And so let's spend that time. But if you who are watching want to receive Jesus Christ as your Savior, call upon his name. Just say that prayer, Lord, I'm a sinner and I don't know what to do. I'm powerless. But my eyes are on you on the cross and I see you dying there for me. And receive Jesus Christ, the promise of God for salvation. And he will be with you now and he'll be with you forever. Jesus will. Or if someone looking for a church home, it's a, a strange way to say it today. But if you are, make the commitment to God right now, thanking him for how he has directed you. And join with us during this time of prayer. And you'll see my email on the screen in just a moment. Use that. Call, uh, email me. I've received Christ today. I want to join First Baptist Fredericksburg today. I have a prayer request today. I'm looking for a church. Can you recommend? We have so many good ones here. I'll recommend several to you. Email me your response today. But let's just spend a few quiet moments in prayer to make that faithful response to God. Our Father who art in heaven, there is no one like you, God. You alone are holy and righteous and just, and you alone are good. And you've been good to us, God. You've seen us through many uh, dark days and trials and, and terror, uh, the terror by the night and the arrow that flies by day and the pestilence that stalks in darkness and the destruction that lays waste at noonday. We have been through those trying times, and you have proven yourself. Do it again, God. Our eyes are on you. Do it again. Get us through this time, and get us through this time purified. We are fasting, God. Purify us through this time of fasting. Bless these who are being saved today by watching a screen but hearing a word a word from you 
and strengthen all of us through this time. God, bring about a great revival and a great harvest of souls for your glory in your kingdom, God, is our prayer. And now may the God of peace who brought up from the dead that great shepherd of the sheep, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, through the blood of the eternal covenant, heal you, mend you, equip you, deliver you from fear, and work in you his good, perfect, and pleasing will through Jesus Christ, to whom be glory now and forever. Amen and hallelujah. God's blessings on you. We are dismissed. <laughs>